I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru. Today is the launch of Intel 8th Gen for the desktop, aka Coffee Lake. KB Lake was 7th Gen, Skylake was 6th Gen, today is 8th Gen. This is the entire press kit from Intel, two CPUs, plus also some of their Optane memory for caching hard drives. Don't need that, we're using SSDs throughout. This tiny little press kit belies the fact this is a major launch for Intel. Clearly a response to AMD Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, all about core counts. So we've got six processors in the range at launch, two Core i3s, two Core i5s, two Core i7s. The two Core i3s, 8100, 8350K, the K being unlocked as per usual, are quad core without hyper-threading. Uh, they don't turbo in the usual Core i3 style, but quad core. And then we have two Core i5s, six core without hyper-threading. They do turbo. They sound very interesting. We were sent, surprisingly, the 8400 rather than the 8600K. Uh, reviewers generally get the unlocked ones, but there we go. So we've got the budget version there, which is unusual and also quite interesting. It's nice to see kind of the regular processors. And then we have the 8700, 8700K. We've got the K there. They are six core with hyper-threading, six core, 12 thread. Think Ryzen 5 1600X on the right track. Big question there is, do six Intel cores compete with eight uh, AMD cores in Ryzen 7? We shall find out. The interesting thing is that those uh, 8700Ks are 95 watt TDP, whereas 7700K, half, uh, two thirds of cores, four rather than six, are uh, 91 watts. 91 to 95 is a tiny step. It suggests Intel thinks they can get away with about the same sort of power. That is a bold claim. The fact is those six core processors have a uh, all core turbo speed of only 200 megahertz lower than the uh, KB Lake. So 7700K, four cores turbos, uh, 200 higher than the 8700K with six cores. So this is highly interesting. Uh, it's a platform, not just a uh, set of processors. Uh, even though the socket, the LGA1151, uh, has been sort of renamed 1151-2, uh, but the, the chipset Z270 to Z370, it's the same thing, it just is. This is what everyone tells us. However, Intel has said no. Old processor, old motherboard, new processor, new motherboard, and they're the twain. So if you want to run your Skylake Cable Lake, you can have a Z270 board. If you want a Coffee Lake 8th Gen, you have to have a Z370 board. Before we dive into uh, extensive uh, test results and such like and opinions, probably wise just to show you a quick and dirty how do these different processors compare running Cinebench. It's quick, it's easy, it's visual, it's good to do. Uh, so I'm going to use this test platform here, which consists of various motherboards depending on the uh, chipset and the processor. Uh, we're using the same cooler throughout, which is a fractal design Celsius S24, 240mm all-in-one Ace Tech, uh, 240mm. Really handy because we've got mounts for all the different platforms, so we can use the same cooler. Uh, we've got some G-Skill memory running at uh, 3200 megahertz, which is its default uh, XMP speed. These uh, new Intel processors, the two Core i3s run 2400 megahertz, and the uh, uh, Core i5, Core i7, 2666, still dual channel, exactly as per KB Lake. Uh, we've also got an EVGA GTX 1080 Ti graphics card founders edition and the power supply, Seasonic Prime Titanium 1000 watt. Also got a handful of uh, Samsung M.2 SSDs, uh, each with Windows 10 Pro installed so we can use switch uh, from platform to platform without having to reinstall Windows and monkey around with drivers and such like. So this is first and foremost a quick and dirty test just to show you how the different uh, processors, different platforms all compare. This is Core i7 7700K KB Lake running at stock clocks. That's all core 4.5 gigahertz. Motherboard is a Zeus Strix Z270F Gaming. So we've got four cores, eight threads. We've seen this done not how many times. It'll hammer through this test without any trouble whatsoever. Speeding through very nicely, but compared to those six core processors, it does now look a little bit limp. And a score of 970, right on the money. Core i7-8700K running at stock clock, so that's all core turbo to 4.3 gigahertz. For reference, a Core i7-7700K running at 4.5 but only quad core will score just under a thousand marks in this test. We've got one and a half times the cores, almost the same clock speed. A bit of math says we're looking for around 1400 marks. 
Cooling system's working, but not particularly hard. 1399, bang on the money. This processor is the Intel Core i7-7800X, which is the uh, big boy running on X299 chipset. And the motherboard in question is a Zeus ROG Rampage 6 Extreme. Very high-end platform. Uh, because of the platform we're running quad channel memory rather than dual channel, but it's the same speed and all the rest of it as before. The thing with this processor, 6 core, 12 thread, it runs at a mere 4.0 gigahertz uh, all core turbo. And as a result, it is deeply unimpressive compared to the new 8700K. Core i5-8400, so 6 cores, no hyper threading, 6 threads. Uh, running at 3.8 gigahertz uh, on all cores, and that's on the Z370 Aorus Gaming 7. We haven't seen a 6-core, six 6-thread six Intel CPU running this test, I don't think ever. Novel configuration. Cooler's running low and slow. And a score of 933. Very comparable to a Kaby Lake 7700K. And now it's the turn of AMD Ryzen 5 1600X running on a Zeus Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard. So this is a 6 core 12 thread processor, just like the new Coffee Lake. The snag being it has quite a low base clock speed. Uh, so uh, you can turbo up to 3.7 gigahertz all cores. If you overclock it, you'll hit four gigahertz, which is that classic conundrum with AMD and Intel. AMD can hit four, Intel can go all the way to five. Out of the box, AMD is slower. And here we go, yep. Beaten by the new Coffee Lake 8700K. Your Core i7-8700K in the Z370 Aorus Gaming 7 BIOS. Not difficult. In the MIT section, go to Advanced Frequency Settings. Go down to CPU Upgrade. Look, we've got the various K SKUs of processor, 8350K, 8600K, 8700K. Do we want 4.8, 4.9 or 5 gigahertz? We'll have five, thank you very much. That, my friends, is that. One click, pretty much. Well, as close to one click as you get. And now as you boot into Windows, the all-in-one liquid cooler is sort of burst into life briefly. There we have it. So we're still showing 3.7 gigahertz there. Open HW monitor. And there we can see five gigahertz, all cores, job done. So here we have the i7-8700K overclocked to 5.0 gigahertz using the auto profile on the uh, Z370 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. Cooling fans kick up, six cores, 12 threads hammering away, high speed. We're looking for more than 1400 marks in Cinebench here. We're gonna be there very soon. Fifteen eighty-three. The launch of Intel 8th Gen Coffee Lake is a triumph. The i7-8700K in particular, it's just mind-boggling. Uh, the funny thing is, although the new 8th Gen beats the KB Lake 7700K hollow, the one category of person that can sit tight and remain happy, very likely, is the owner of 7700K. Uh, unless you're sitting there with your four cores pegged flat out at all times and you're thinking, oh no, I want more, well, what do you do? And the irony is that you can just as easily upgrade to Ryzen 7 uh, and go for eight cores, 16 threads, rather than six cores, 12 threads. But you're probably not a straightforward gamer if you're in that position. 
Uh, if you're gaming, four cores very likely at the moment suits you nicely, in which case the cable at 7700K does a decent job. Uh, further down the stack, it gets more complicated. Ryzen 5 1600X continues to be a decent piece of hardware, but that new unlocked Core i5 very likely beats it. However, as we had the locked 8400 Core i5, hard to be absolutely certain. The 8400 looks promising. My guess is that 8600K is going to be an absolute demon of a processor. Uh, the i7-8700 I'm going to ignore, but the 8700K like that a great deal. The fact it takes so little extra power compared to KB Lake 7700 is truly impressive, and yet you can bump the speed up to 5 gigahertz just like that. Uh, in, in the case of this gigabyte BIOS, it was just one click and you're done. And that was an absolute pleasure to see. If we move up the field to uh, X299, as I demonstrated, my six core X299 compared to this processor it looks absolutely dismal, but that's a low uh, all turbo clock speed that's a problem, it requires overclocking, still not impressive. So there we go. But you move on beyond that 8, 10, 12, whatever to 18 cores, you're in a different league. Ryzen uh, 7 and indeed Threadripper, also a different league. It's the lower end of the market that stands to be absolutely changed by these new processors. To me, however, the single biggest uh, factor of interest is the old school, the people who are still running Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge. Those people who each time they see a new generation of processors go 10%, it doesn't do it for me, I'm not interested. Well, here you are, this is 40, 50% more. Uh, and realistically, six cores plus 12 threads, that's going to be enough to uh, lock you down safely for years to come. As games become more multi-threaded, they'll use those cores, but they're not going to hit a plateau where six isn't enough. I don't know how long it's going to take, but it's going to take a while. So if you're still stuck in the past, if your processor responds to the name of Haswell, for example, you should really take a close look at this. If you've been considering a move to KB Lake or maybe even Ryzen, this absolutely should be number one on your shopping list. Yeah, you've got to buy a motherboard and a processor. It's not going to be cheap. And if you're stuck in the past, you may have to jump from DDR3 to DDR4. But realistically, that is true of any platform. So it's time to spend some cash, that is for sure. The one thing Intel's absolutely done here is they've removed your excuse. If you've been saying, no, it's not worth upgrading, I'm not going to do it, this absolutely addresses that and answers the question. At the moment, the one little snag is that we suspect Intel intended to launch this processor at the end of the year. We hear rumors they may be suffering supply problems. So it's possible that you'll want to buy 8th gen Coffee Lake, but simply want to get your hands on the silicon, in which case, put your name down, uh, pay the cash on the credit card, and uh, let's hope you get your uh, CPU and your motherboard quite soon. But Coffee Lake, 8th gen Intel, it's a game changer. No doubt about it. But ironically, Ryzen 7 1800X is still king of the heap. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. I'm Neil Walder for Kit Guru. This is Intel Core i7 8700K and 8400.